He's a grad student at Simon Fraser, and he will speak about enumeration of minimal cut sets in metabolomic networks. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, we developed a method for reporting minimal cut set in metabolic networks. Here, we sh uh, here uh, today, I will show you an overview of our method and how it works compared to existing methods. Okay. Let's begin with background. Consider a biological environment uh, with a specified boundary. For example, a cell leads its chemical reactions and uh, this, uh, this reaction will form a, a network. We call this network a metabolic network. For example, here we have a, we have a sample metabolic network. It has um, six reactions and four metabolites. A reaction can be re reversible. It means that it can have a negative uh, flow rate as well as a positive flow rate. We can set fluxes for each reaction, and if those fluxes satisfy the network concept, we call the vector of uh, that uh, uh, those flux, uh, fluxes a valid flux mode. For example, here, if we set these fluxes for these reaction, these fluxes would uh, satisfy the network constraints. So this vector would be a valid flux mode. Uh, elementary flux modes are the flux modes that have uh, minimal active reactions. We can rebuild every flux mode with the linear combinations of elementary flux modes. Uh, um, one important application of uh, metabolic network analysis is to find a way to block certain reactions. Uh, if we remove a group of reaction, and uh, removing those, uh, removing uh, uh, that, uh, that group of reaction causes the target reaction to get blocked. We call that group of reaction a cut set. Removing a group of reaction will cause, uh, will cause to remove, uh, remo cause removing some of the valid flux modes. If all uh, valid flux modes containing the target reaction gets removed, the target reaction gets blocked. For example, here, uh, let's set reaction one as the target reaction. These are the elementary flux modes contain, uh, containing the reaction one. Let's look at reaction two flux, uh, reaction two flux in these elementary flux modes. You can see that uh, reaction two is active in every elementary flux mode containing the reaction one. So if we remove reaction two from the network, it will elim eliminate all of the elementary flux modes containing the reaction one, which caused the reaction one to get blocked. N uh, so reaction two is a cut set for reaction one. Now let's look at reaction five and six. Uh, reaction five or reaction six alone doesn't contribute to every flux mode in uh, every flux mode containing the reaction one. So uh, each of them alone. Uh, uh, absence of each of them alone doesn't uh, uh, doesn't make the reaction one to get blocked. But removing reaction five and six together will cause the reaction one to get blocked. Since they are together, will uh, contribute in every ele uh, every elementary flux mode containing reaction one. Minimal cut sets are cut sets which cannot be reduced. It means that every member of the minimal cut set is necessary for blocking the target reaction. If you remove uh, any member of a minimal cut set, absence of that uh, uh, sets wouldn't uh, block the target reaction. Um. In many, case of, uh, in many cases of the direct target identification, we can build a metabolic network of the pathogen, and we can look for ways to blocking the target reaction. 
the biomass reaction. Biomass reaction is the reaction which is responsible for the growth of the pathogen. So we are looking for uh, a small group of reaction which absence of them will cause the biomass reaction to get blocked. Uh, this approach had uh, many successful uh, results in many cases. <clears throat> Mineral clusters also have uh, application in metabolic network engineering. One example is the uh, one example is increasing the biomass yield of E. coli, and another example is optimizing the ethanol production of yeast. Okay, concept-based models. A concept based model is a mathematical model of the uh, model of uh, a metabolic network. We will create a n by q a stoichiometry matrix uh, based on uh, contribution of each metabolite in each reaction. n is the number of reactions, uh, number of metabolites, and uh, uh, q is the number of reactions. So each column. Uh, is corresponds, uh, each column corresponds to a, a reaction and each row is correspond to a metabolite. Let's look at this example. For example, reaction two is consuming metabolite A. So we put minus one for metabolite A, a in the reaction two's column. And reaction two is producing metabolite B, so we put plus one uh, for metabolite B in reaction two's column. So, uh, and we will uh, fill the rest of the stoichiometry matrix the same way. <coughs> By using hypergraph uh, dualization methods, we can uh, report minimal cost set with the, uh, with, given, with the given elementary flux modes. There are various, uh, various methods for, uh, for the hypergraph uh, dualization. First, we need to give the hyper, uh, we, give, uh, we need to give the method uh, every elementary flux modes containing the target reaction. Then it will compute uh, a minimal set of reaction which intersects with all of these elementary flux modes. So, removing these sets from the network will, will eliminate all of these elementary flux modes, which cause the target reaction to get blocked. Uh, these traditional approaches have some downsides. First of all, they need flux modes to be computed, which uh, usually require time-consuming pre-process. And they are not customizable as new methods. I will talk about the customized minimal cut sets later. The polarization method uh, is a comparatively new method. Based on the stoichiometry matrix, reversibility information, and target reaction, it will create a new network called dual network. For example, if we set reaction one here as the target reaction, it will create this dual network. Um, this dual network has 16 reactions and six metabolites here. The most uh, important property of this dual network is that every elementary flux modes of this dual network will be mapped to a cut set uh, for target reactions in the original network. But since uh, these, uh, these results are not necessarily minimal cuts, that we need to remove non-minimal cuts, uh, non-minimal cuts in a uh, pre uh, in a post-processing step. With this, uh, with this method, we don't need for uh, look for uh, wait for uh, elementary flux modes to be computed, and we can uh, find the minimal cuts that directly from the elementary flux modes in the dual network. But this method has uh, some downside as well. First of all, we need to compute the dual network for, uh, uh, every, uh, for different target reactions, and we need to compute elementary flux modes for each of them. And, <clears throat> and sometimes uh, the dual, uh, the, uh, Elementary flux modes of the dual network produce too many non-minimal cut sets, which needs to be removed in the second process, the post-processing uh, post step. Lemma four of our pa uh, of uh, our paper describes a new way for finding cut sets. Uh, we can extract cut sets from 
uh, certain vectors in the row space of the stoichiometry matrix. This way, we can find every minimal cut sets from vectors in the row space of stoichiometry matrix. But again, since uh, some of these results are not uh, minimal cuts, uh, not minimal sets, we need to remove non-minimal cut sets in a uh, post-processing step. Our method, in a way, uh, is similar to Bayesian method. We create a new network, but only based on uh, stoichiometry matrix, uh, and the target reaction doesn't affect the creation of the dual, met uh, dual method. So it means that the dual method is always the same for uh, any target reaction. The dual method always has the same number of reactions as uh, the original network, but it has fewer metabolites. So it means that our dual, method, uh, dual network is always uh, smaller than the dual network of the Bayer-Schein method. So flux boots of the, uh, dual, uh, this dual network will be mapped to vectors in the row space of the stoichiometry matrix, which those vectors will be mapped to cut sets uh, in uh, uh, will be maps uh, to cutsets for any desired target reaction. Okay. Uh, let me describe uh, you what happens with our method. Uh, so consider a, a two n-dimensional space, which n is the number of reaction. We have one dimension for uh, each direction of each reaction. The flux modes of the dual network will uh, create a pointed cone in this uh, uh, in this uh, space. And edges of this pointed core are actually elementary flux modes. We call these edges extreme rays. These extreme rays are the elementary flux modes of the dual network, which uh, these uh, ed uh, extreme rays will be mapped to vectors in the, uh, uh, vectors in the row space of the stoichiometry matrix, which those will be mapped to cut sets uh, for the target reaction. If we eliminate uh, dimensions corresponding to forward direction of the irreversible reaction, we will have a linear uh, subspace. The projection of this pointed cone into this linear subspace would be another pointed cone. Some of the extreme rays will remain extreme rays after projection, but some will not. Uh, the, ex the extreme rays, which uh, will remain uh, extreme rays after the projection, are the ones that will be mapped to minimal cut sets eventually. Uh, our method is uh, our method works for uh, for only for a single target reaction, but uh, this is not a problem since almost every application of minimal cut sets uh, are interested in a single target reaction. Uh, also, it could produce too many non-minimal cut sets as well. However, this is not a problem um, uh, in most of the cases. It rarely happens, but uh, it rarely happens. And when it happens, it also uh, uh, it also happens to polarization methods, and it's more severe uh, in the polarization method. Customizing minimal cuts it, it, uh, it means that we are specifying minimal cuts that we are looking for before the computation. Let's say we, are, we say that we are looking for 100 uh, smallest minimal cut sets which doesn't have certain reactions. <coughs> um, uh, this, uh, we can implement uh, our method via integer linear programming uh, for customized minimal cut sets. The same goes for the Bollerischer method. And the advantage of the integer linear programming of our method is that it doesn't have the limitation we mentioned. We don't need uh, to remove the non-minimal cut sets since we can look for minimal cut sets uh, directly, and we, don't, uh, we can uh, look for minimal cut sets for multiple target reactions. And it also uh, supports advanced constraints like uh, minimal cut sets for uh, for one direction of a reversible reaction. Uh, <coughs> we implement uh, four methods uh, to make the comparison unbiased. Uh, uh, Birch and FK algorithm are, uh, are alg algorithms for hypergraph dualization. I'll show you the result of these uh, four methods on 
uh, three different networks. First net uh, on the first network, the goal was reporting minimal costs for the, uh, uh, when the target reaction is the first reaction. Here you can see that Berger and FK algorithm didn't finish after five hours. However, uh, Bollerschen and uh, our method was able to report the minimal cut sets. Uh, Bollerschen method uh, finished after half an hour, and our method was finished after about five minutes. In the second network, you can see that uh, all other methods failed to report the minimal cut sets after five hours. The goal here was uh, reporting minimal cut sets uh, for every reaction. So we set the, uh, we set, uh, each time we set the target reaction, one of the reaction of the network. Uh, our method was able to finish its job um, in about one minute. Here you can see that our method took advantage of the fact that it can produce uh, elementary flux modes of the dual network and use it for different target reactions. In the third network, you can see that uh, Berge and FK algorithm was able to report the minimal cuts in a reasonable time, but our method and Bollerschen method uh, uh, failed to report the minimal cuts. Because uh, in this case, uh, uh, what happens is that there were too many non-minimal cuts sets in the first step, and they didn't get to second uh, uh, process, which was removing uh, non-minimal cut sets. It, it, uh, this, uh, scenario happens rarely, but when it happens uh, to our method, it happens to polarization methods as well. <laughs> For customized minimal cost, we implemented our method and polarization method, uh, <clears throat> polarization method, which is the state of the art for customized minimal cut sets. Here we have an, uh, here we have equally metabolic model, uh, model with 2,300 reactions. In this experiment, we ran both methods iteratively uh, on this network. In each iteration, we set the target reaction as one of the, uh, one of the reactions, starting from the reaction one to the last reaction. In each iteration, we give them one minute to compute as many uh, minimal cuts as they can. Here are the summary of the results. Uh, on average, they both uh, uh, produce uh, about 12 minimal cut sets, uh, we, we, and we spend uh, uh, and both of them spend about five uh, seconds uh, uh, for finding the first minimal cut set, and they fail to find any minimal cut set in less than one percent of iteration. So you can see that they both did the, about the same job on uh, this metabolic network, and they the results are pretty much the same on the other results uh, on other networks as well. So to summarize, uh, our method is faster than Bollerschen methods for full enumeration, which is faster for, uh, than other methods in most of the cases. Our method, uh, uh, our method is, uh, works for only one target reaction, but this is not. The, uh, but this is what we want in most of the applications of minimal cut sets. Uh, for customized minimal cut sets, we can add advanced constraints uh, for the minimal cut sets. And our method is a simpler alternative to the state-of-the-art method. Thank you for your attention. Please visit our GitHub for, uh, for the full results and uh, the implementations. Thank you. Thank you very much for a nice presentation. We have time for one quick question. What reaction was the target reaction, for example, in IAF1260 in your experiment? Mm, excuse me? Uh, which, rea which reaction was the target reaction? Uh, what? Which reaction was? Uh, I'm asking, uh, uh, you chose some reaction as a target reaction. Ta target and, reaction. And for IAF1260, which reaction was the target? For this one? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so we set the, oh, uh, we set each reaction uh, as a target reaction. We ran both methods iteratively, and each iteration we changed the target reaction, starting from the uh, reaction one to the last reaction. This is the uh, average of the results. Ah, oh, I see. Thank you. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, sorry, I have a question. Is that okay? Here. 
Just a quick one. Okay, quick one. Yeah, uh, how scalable is your method for large scale models like? Uh, um, you can see that uh, these models are, have uh, about 100 to 200 reactions, and sometimes we can produce mineral cut sets for over 300, uh, uh, for metabolic network with 300 or 400 reactions. Uh, but this is, a, uh, this is, you can see that it's uh, the case for the full enumeration. For customized mineral cut sets, you can go up for uh, you know, 2,000, 3,000 reactions, and it works. Since we are looking for certain minimal costs, we can, uh, uh, we can, uh, you know, t uh, run the methods on uh, large scale uh, metabolic networks. Okay. Thank you. I suggest you continue discussion uh, uh, separately or in the coffee break. We go on with the next presentation, which is by Marcus.